In this episode of the Modern Cannabis, we're going to be talking about indica and sativa and hybrid. You know, those three weed strains. One makes you all energetic, makes you clean the house. And one makes you stuck to the couch and sleepy and nap time. But is it really the case? I hear a lot of different versions of the story. Uh, we're going to dive into the science and to the reality of those topics tonight with the Modern Cannabis. We have Jerry in Austin and myself, Troy from 420 Vape Zone. We are your your three modern cannabis, and tonight we're gonna be we're gonna be vaping a bunch of weed and exploring indica versus sativa. What do you what are you guys vaping on tonight? Go ahead, Austin. I'm gonna be vaping on the one from from Planet of the Vapes, and I have the Vortex sitting here, and we may pull out the sticky brick. We'll see how long this thing goes. All right, on man. Yeah, I'm rolling with the one as well, but I'm sticking it on this uh, thing I got at Champs last week, the Polar Blast. This guy was there with these uh, ice mugs for bongs, and he uh, packs them full of ice, and he had a little, uh, you can smoke with it, but he has a little little kind of gong connector here, so we can put the one right on there, and it's a perfect little walk around with some ice cold, so I'm kind of stoked. Right now, I got some Hippie Crippler, which I believe uh, is an Indica dominant hybrid. Feels that way. We'll talk about what that means. That's a pretty cool contraption, Jerry. I'm digging it. So you're, you said you said it's an indica dominant hybrid. I think so. It feels that way to me. So in the in the traditional uh, strain definitions of of cannabis, uh, they they always say that cannabis has like two different species of, of a, a sativa and an indica. But in reality, it's not really species of the plant. It's all it's all one plant. Even hemp is the same plant plant as marijuana. Uh, but as far as the indica and the sativa, the traditional wisdom kind of says that indica makes you you a, more of a body high and sativa is more of like a mental euphoria but how how do you how do you see those results with what you're vaping now you said it's an indica dominant hybrid would you say those effects are are a reality you know it's all about how we communicate and uh you know we've got this anecdotal thing like you said sativa indica and the hybrids and and what they mean and um it really just is, is from experience it's a way to communicate there's some other guys coming up with some new ideas but Typically, when I say an indica dominant hybrid, I mean something that's going to kind of take you down the middle. I'll get I'll get some good uh, head high as well as some 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 little bit of body feel, but then uh, towards the end, I get a little sleepier and a little more couchy. So you know, like about a ninety minute to two hour ride that kind of goes like that. Kick ass! I'm I'm going to be vaping on both. I I, I went out and I chose. A uh, very strong known sativa and a uh, pretty strong indica. So I, I have sour diesel lemon Kush going on here, and then I have purple punch for my indica. And I, I'm gonna vape sativa first. And I've already been been I've already been vaping sativa, and I already have kind of a a mental high. And halfway through the show, I'm gonna switch to an indica just to see how things go. Austin, I know you have a, a lot more smoking background. I know you're you're a full time vapor now, and you're also in in a legal state. So from your your past smoking experience yeah have you have you ever even been mindful of indica or sativa or noticed a difference in in the smoking world so i would say that i've noticed a difference but i couldn't tell you what it was you know i just because being in this in that time you know i can't just go to the store and say hey i want indica or hey i want sativa i just get hey let me put some material on my blunt and let's spunk this bitch and i'm gonna go play some video games either i'll play video games all night or I play video games. So I fall asleep, <laughs> you know? So, but I, I did, I do notice though, that there is, there was a difference because I remember sometimes I would get like anxiety, just like a whole bunch of fucking anxiety from, from certain strains and other strains. I just felt a lot more relaxed and uh, wanted to watch some, some movies and fucking eat some chips and call it a day um, until I sobered up a little bit. So from from the smoking days, I don't think I ever paid attention, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, for, for me, and I remember my smoking days, it, it was a lot of the same. And, and I think there was two different highs that we had, but it wasn't wasn't so obvious. Like there was like the high where we'd get out and, and, and do a demolition derby on the riding lawnmowers at this farm. And then there was the <laughs> high where, where we would just all pass out on the couch and just, you know, watch some dumb movies. But we never we never really associated it to different strains. We just kind of thought it was more of what are we in the mood to do? Like we we always treated cannabis as like we're gonna go get high, we're gonna do something, whether it's gonna be watch a watch a movie or we're gonna go fuck around. And I I still treat it that way, even though in the vape space I I do notice a pretty significant difference between sativa and indica. I just power through it no matter what. <laughs> you know, I was <clears throat> today I was doing some more research on 
on the differences just because I wanted to have more of an understanding of what the traditional wisdom is, right? And I came across these articles. I'm going to read to you some of what this article said. And it says, uh, it, it gives me examples of both the Inica and the Sativa. Um, and it says the major qualities of Indica medical strains include increased mental relaxation, muscle relaxation, decreases nausea, decreases acute pain, it increases appetite, and it increases dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that helps control the brain's reward and pleasure centers. And they say that that's, that's used mostly for nighttime. And then there is um, the major qualities of sativa, okay, are in anti-anxiety, antidepressant treats chronic pain, increases focus and creativity. It increases serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter involved in the regulation of learning, mood, sleep, anxiety, and appetite. And they recommend this for daytime use. So upon reading that, you know, that, that really kind of breaks it down to me. And like I said, when I would back in the smoking days, I can relate to both of those. Back then, I wasn't paying attention. Like, oh, this is what it's making me do. But I can, I can remember that there, there's definitely a difference. Um, I just couldn't pick and choose when I would get that difference. Yeah, I, I think, I think a lot of that is the differences are, are one, they're, they're subtle. I mean, if you take a, a, a super strong sativa and compare it to a super strong indica, you, you make the, the ber- very biggest difference. But everything in between is, is really just kind of in between. And even a lot of sativas that I buy, and, and I have the luxury of being in California where I can walk into the store to the dispensary and, and look at, oh, these are the, the 15 sativas and these are the 15 indicas and these are the 30 hybrids that are in between. In reality, almost all of the sativas are also in between and almost all of the indicas are also in between. Like all of the strains always have kind of some of both. Like there's, there's not a lot of strains that are one end of the spectrum. One over the other. Yeah. Yeah, everything's a hybrid. That makes sense because yeah. now, you know, somebody will tell me what strain I'm getting, right? And they'll say I'm getting Bubba Kush, for example, and I'll go to Leafly and see, you know, what is the most dominant traits that I'm going to get from this plant. And even it, it will say creativity and fucking energy, but then it'll 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 show some of of relaxation. You know what I'm saying? Because you have the bars where it just shows you how far on that bar system graph. Um, you get from each of these things that that are prominent in the strain and there's always some some of the other yeah, yeah that's a cool side i like the way they break that down and, and make it real easy for you to, to kind of check it out sometimes i look at it and i wonder am i setting myself up mentally by by <laughs> you know what i mean am i am i am i going to create that now giving yourself the placebo effect yeah there you go there you go so i always wonder about that because i mean they really are i mean it seems like everything's some sort of a hybrid look man i mean i'm I'm still in a state that just became legal and I still don't know that I really trust some of the stuff that I get here. I just got a whole bunch of blue dream and it just looks like whatever, you know, I just, it's like, you know, and I literally got it just cause I thought it would be, and I wanted to see if it was whatever. So the one thing we've learned about the whole Indica sativa hybrid thing is it's really not as, as cut and dry as, as the three labels make it out to be. Uh, and, and when you get into the science, it's really about the terpenes and the entourage effect of all those different terpenes and cannabinoids, because there's hundreds of them. Every every cannabis plant, every cannabis strain, there's, there's hundreds of different uh, terpenes and cannabinoids, and every, every strain has a different combination of them. And those different combinations all deliver a different effect. So even if one strain is grown in four different environments and four different regions with four different soils and four different climates, that same strain will essentially have slightly different terpene and cannabinoid pro- profiles because of uh, because of the way it was grown. And it, it would give you a subtly different high or majorly different depending on the strain. Don't you love organics? I mean, the possibilities are endless, man. I, I just love that. You can take one strain and come up with all kinds of different things just based on environment. And it kind of mimics us, man. We come out as little babes and the environment just beats us up and runs us around. And then we're, we're a certain way, you know, and, uh, you know, they focused on THC a while ago and everybody's always about how much THC is in this thing. And I go, man, I'm so sick of hearing about that. I mean, this is the first thing we discovered a while back and it's all we know. And so that's how we measure it. And then we start noticing CBDs. And so they start, you know, tracking that stuff and oh, look at the medicinal effects. And then, and and then all of a sudden, it was a few years ago that the, the terpenes started making a big difference. And all of a sudden, that was all that mattered. And now I'm hearing something about flavonoids are going to be, you know, the next thing. And it's just, there's so much going on in this thing, man. We don't know. 
I honestly think we don't know what's up. I mean, we're at the tip of the iceberg on this thing. So we could all like get passionate and argue sides about something, but I think it's all going to get reproved or disproved or deeper figured out later. And we're all going to be wrong about most of it. For you guys that are, that are listening or watching, if you're wondering what terpenes are, myself personally, I had to Google it. I, I wanted to, I wanted to get more information on, on what, what terpenes are. And uh, what I found is that terpenes are the fragrant oils found in plants that determine the character and effects of cultivars. I believe C-U-L-T-I-V-A-R-S, cultivars. We're going to question mark that one. Um, they are found in all living plants, not just cannabis. Terpenes play an essential role in wine, aromatherapy, and perfume because of the psychoactive effects of certain terpene combinations that stimulate, arouse, or sedate. So that's where, like you were saying, Troy, the entourage effect, the different, the different terpenes are going to give you different effects, regardless of, of if it's indica or, or sativa dominant, the terpenes play a big role. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and we don't, and we're only tracking like about a dozen of them right now. There's, there's tons of those as well. I mean, that's what I love about it is every time we discover some of this stuff, we go, Oh, look, man, how much we can figure out with these 12 or 16. And then there's like you know, another couple hundred in there messing around too. I'm gonna tell you what, side note. Um, I just got this plan of the vapes one uh, today and I've been, I've been using it, man. And I'll tell you what, this thing puts out fucking clouds it's got a little um a session timer on here and i let it sit at 4 30 uh with my cbd in here and i just and i just roast it and man you can get some fucking clouds out of this thing you're gonna be relaxing from that that action there i like it yeah man this same thing is uh filling up this little polar thing over here with ease it's a good little design, man. When it comes to like customizing your high and choosing like what kind of energy you're looking for, I think that's really where vaporizers shine because when you smoke a strong sativa, you can still get really stoned and versus versus smoking a, a, an indica. It's harder to tell the difference when you're smoking. When you're vaporizing, you can isolate those temperatures of the terpenes and the cannabinoids, so you're not you're not boiling off the sedative uh, cannabinoids. You're you're kind of selecting your high uh, by choosing the temperatures and i forgot where this was going i'm, uh, I'm really high i forgot what i was saying uh cbd <laughs> actually cbd does vape cbd does vape at 4 30 100 uh, i actually pulled up the chart that we will make sure that we can show you during the video but I, I found a chart online that actually breaks down the different compounds that are in the thc and it'll let you know from from 220 degrees all the way up to, oh, yeah, to right. 451, which is combustion. Oh, right on. Um, so, you know, we've got from 220 where it releases THCA, a strong sedative anti-convulsivant, um, all the way to combustion, which is 451, where it states that the fire releases toxic chemicals by producing smoke into the air. Um, and the good thing is with these vaporizers, especially the battery powered vaporizers, is we can actually control the temperatures in which we vape at. So we can medically or recreationally extract the specific uh, effect. Yeah. And yeah those, those charts are getting nicer, man. Uh, that's, that's pretty sweet. I like how they laid that out. Yeah, I really, I, I really like this one. You know, it, it, it's different from smoking, you know, you smoke and you basically poof, it all goes up and you destroy half of it and then you get the rest of it all at once. And uh, when you're vaporizing, you can, you can dial in certain temperatures that only go so far in terms of what they're going to liberate. And um, that was one of the draws to me when I first started vaporizing, because, you know, like, like we were talking earlier, uh, you just get whatever you can as far as uh, herb on the street and you don't know what you're getting and, and it's hard to get a sativa, but, but I could take any of those hybrids and they're always hybrids that I could get and throw them in my vape and keep it at 350 to 390 and really have that heady daytime social cleanup thing that I, that I was chasing. And then uh, I could keep the rest of it for at night. I'd bump up the temperature and use the same herb at night and, and that'd be my nightcap. And I, and I still do that now. I've got a, I got a whole dish over here uh, right here that's everything that I've, I've vaped at a lower temp and I'm going to beat it up later at a higher temp. And uh, that's been one of the great things about, about vaping for me is being able to get the flexibility from the, from the machine that I wasn't able to get on the street from, from the weed. Yeah, and I think, I think that's absolutely right, man. And it's almost like vaporizers are 
a better tool for customizing your high than relying on indica versus sativa versus hybrid and all that shit for a lot of people because you can you can vape a, a, an indica at lower temperatures and not get sleepy high and you can vape a, a sativa at a higher temperature and get the sleepy high because I, I, I do it all the time on accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, what's really cool too. Like, like what you just touched on Jerry is, is the temp stepping where you can take any strain, vape it at 350, save it for later. If you want to put it back in your vaporizer, turn that fucker up to 400 and extract the rest of the compounds that are left over. So you're not, you get everything almost out of, out of vaping. And, and what's even, you totally didn't mute that. <laughs> That's sorry. so wonderful. Um, I coughed my, my lungs up earlier and I thought I muted, but That's I didn't. Funny. So these, these mics are setting us up. <clears throat> but uh, that, that's another thing that I really love about these vaporizers, man, is you can take this material that I've been using for a long fucking time. And, you know, now with, with my current knowledge, I've wasted so much material just by burning it. Mm -hmm. And then and just burning it alone wastes the fucking material. Because of the fact that you can temp step by by going at a low temperature from let's say four fifty to get your three fifty. That's what I meant. Three fifty. Right. On. Then going to four hundred, right? And then you just so happen that if you really want to, you can save your AVB and then make edibles. So like you're really extracting everything that you possibly can out of this fucking miracle plant from these vaporizers. And <clears throat> for instance, I mean, I got you got the butane vapes like the Vortex or the butane vape like the the, the uh, sticky brick where you can't really con control temperature. But with with this Planet of the Vapes one, for example, um, you can. They have these things out there where you can really customize your high and extract all all of everything that this plant has to offer. I just want to say that that scream you hear right about now is uh, Pacalolo. Uh, don't worry, man. I got you. I got you. Uh, my man Pacalolo is moderator at Fuck Combustion, and um, he's been preaching this forever about these these temp charts. They're getting better on the web, like I said, but but they've had some that are out there forever, and it drives them nuts because people come on and think, okay, then at 370, we're boiling this off, and this other shit ain't. And you know, we're, we're dealing with an organic structure that is is interwoven and has depths and. And as we vaporize, we start on the surface or the outside and then work our way in. And, and if you're in a convection vape and you stir it, then you more exposure and different things. And so it's not as cut and dry as I set it at this temp and I only got these compounds. But anecdotally, you can kind of draw the line in there and it works. I mean, for me, that line is 390 to 400. If I can, you know, below that, I get one thing and above that, I get another. And and, uh, and, 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 and it is a sativa indica kind of an effect, but, um, yeah, it's not as simple as just, uh, pushing a number in and getting it, but, but those effects are there, man. That's so true. I, I dealt with, I dealt with that a lot when I first started vaping because I, I was using it, you know, medicinally trying to vape during the day and, and solve my, my focus issues. I was trying to, trying to replace Adderall with cannabis, which at first I thought was impossible, uh, but vaporizers and sativa made it possible and then as, as my tolerance built up i realized it's not just the sativa it's it's just just the cannabis that's that amazing back. yeah we, we, we've really gotten a lot out of the temperature thing these days um and actually uh, one more thing i wanted to say about temperature stuff uh it was about a year and a half ago i was at a show talking to the guys from ghost and they were doing some research or run into some where basically they were saying that uh the terpenes in, 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 in our plant start to get destroyed at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when they start to get destroyed. So that's why the, the first temp on that vape started out at 330 something, it was 338 or something like that. Cause they wanted to make sure that if you really wanted to get everything in that you could with all the turbs, let's, let's have a, a temp that won't destroy anything, hit that first, and then you can move on up the, 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 the chain there. And so that's kind of, I, I was fascinated by that. And I started trying to figure out how I could incorporate that in my vaping uh, controlled and I started out with a herbalizer blowing up a bag. It, I'd started at about 335 and, and hit the fan and let it blow up a bag. And then I just hit the up button and, and hold it in and just kind of scale it because I think it goes so fast. 
And over the course of about 45 seconds, I could scale it up the top and get one bag that kind of had the full spectrum. And man, I'm telling you, they were tasty and thick and I mean, amazing. Like it really was just a fuller bodied experience. And so that's why when that volcano came out and I saw that program I was like, dude, they made something that'll, that'll automate this shit. And it's really cool. I recommend anybody who wants to fuck around with full spectrum vaping, uh, especially if you're doing the bags or something, start below 350 and, and catch everything you can. And I, I think I, I think I noticed a little stronger sessions. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you, if you stay at 334 or in that window for a while, you get, you get all the myrcene, I think it is. I think it boils off at like 334. Uh, it's supposed to be the most euphoric and psychoactive one. Uh, and, and if you stay at that temperature, you, you keep it without destroying it. And you can also isolate it. Uh, but I wanted to go back to what you were talking about with the, the ghosts and what they were talking about with, with terpene destruction. There's a lot of data out there. And uh, I, w- I want to point out that looking at data points and applying them out of context or in a different context than other than what they're recorded in uh, is, is, is a dangerous, you know, there, there's some, some bad decisions that get made uh, looking at weird little data points. And I've heard, I've heard from vape engineers and vape CEOs, you know, tales of like, Oh, if a, if a vaporizer is blowing vapor out your lungs and it's being wasted, that came mm-hmm. from a, from a data set somewhere too, you know, somewhere he, he, they looked at data and said, Oh, this is, this is indeed THC and cannabinoids. Therefore, you know, it's a wasteful, wasteful thing to, to exhale vapor. I just, wanted, I just want to point out that data can be, can tell many stories. I took a bag once because I was like, I'm going to find a fuck out. <laughs> I took a bag and I had an empty one next to me and I inhaled from this one and exhaled into that one. And I just did it until the, the fresh one was done. I was like, whoa. And then I took that second bag and eh, it was m- like moist or humid, you know, Ooh. and it did, it, and, 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 and it didn't really do anything for my high. I was like, I don't ever want that shit again. <laughs> I remember shotgunning hits. I wonder if that, if that really works. I don't know. I didn't like it at all. I'll keep my vapor fresh. Thank you very much. Go through, <coughs> go through all this fucking trouble. And then I want to fucking rebreathe vapor. <laughs> so I remember in, in one of our previous discussions, you guys were talking about a nose test, some test oh, that, yeah. that we can use uh, to to identify whether it's a sativa or indica heavy strain. Can you? Can yeah, you that? that shit's dope, man. Uh, this, this this guy Max Montrose out there at the Tricom Institute is uh, he's, he's the guy I was kind of referring to earlier in the show, man. This this kid's onto something. He's trying to redefine how we how we how we how we describe cannabis and to, from from sativa indica to a, a a broad leaf and a narrow leaf marijuana. Whether or not you get into that and all those other stuff, I don't know. That's again, it's linguistics. But this nose test thing is is la fucking jit. <laughs> and I'll put a dollar in the jar. It's la fucking jit. <laughs> Um, and I, I think the kid needs to get credit for it. Troy and I uh, l- lucked out and got to take his class uh, out there in LA, I think last year. And man, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot of good stuff, man. It, it was really cool. Interpreting class is what it was. In- Interpreting 101 mm-hmm. by the Tricom Institute. That was uh, an incredibly insightful and educational day, man. Uh, not only do we get to hang out, but there was so much amazing weed content and the the biggest take home for me i mean aside from the indica sativa like oh oh okay this is really how it works is, is this nose the nose test is, is what max calls it and uh, here you can see like when you when you sniff you sniff your jar of of fresh nugs you can you can kind of get a feel of where the uh where the scents hit your nose i should switch back to myself because i'm using my fucking hands and stuff. So when you, when you smell your, your nugs, you kind of base the, uh, where the smells hit your nose, like the impact of the aroma. So like here I'm, I'm sniffing this sour diesel lemon kush and it, it, it's a sativa, which you should be feeling up here, but in reality, it's kind of hitting my nose in the middle. So in the term of the, the spectrum, it's more of a hybrid than it is a, a sativa, even though I use it as a sativa and it gives me more of a sativa effect. On the flip side, this, this purple punch, oh, when, I, when I inhale this, for one, it's, it's like straight up purple. I, I can feel it like right here, like the, the sides of my nostrils and the flare, like in the bell, like I can, that's where I can smell it and feel it. It's, 
it's it's down it's down here and that is more on the the true indica of the feeling so an indica dominant hybrid you'll feel it here and here but if it's like a super strong sativa you'll get it up in here but even even with the, the sativas that i've found i still get some in the middle and, and in the lower part have you have you had a lot of experience with sniffing your weed jerry yeah man since that class i've been playing with it, it's a lot of fun man and, and, it, and it, it it works man i mean i can yes, every sir. every time i'd go to my buddies and he'd pull out this big bag i'd go let me see and I just uh, and all you have to do is pay attention to where you feel it, not what you smell, not how it smells. Just where do you smell? It? Where do you feel the sensation of the smell? Which which never occurred to me before. Never. I was like, what the hell is this kid talking about? And it's wild. Yeah, it really is. And and when you feel it down here, because it's 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 lower. I think of it being more grounded, more of an indica as opposed to higher, more in the head like a sativa. And you just kind of go wherever you feel it on that scale and. And you and and if you do it a few times and and you really notice it, you'll get to the point where then then you you just you don't even think about it. You just can smell it and know what's coming. It's really cool. Yeah, dude, that was cool as fuck. How you just described that, <clears throat> like when lower we, lower in the ground and then higher into your head. Like that's that's a great fucking description. And I just pulled out I just pulled out my CBD lifter, which is supposed to be a, a, a sativa, and I, I feel it. I feel it like like here. And, and even with the CBD, fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, and that's that's cool shit. Yeah, it's real we, cool. When we first did that class, and and he taught us that technique, he unfortunately he didn't have anything to demonstrate with. Uh, and I I had it was funny. I had ordered weed, and I had weed on the way, but it didn't get there in time. <laughs> that's right. But when I when I got home, I was I was so excited to to try it. Almost all of them kind of had the same mm -hmm. impact in my nose. And I was disappointed. I was like, is this really a thing? Because I bought I bought some sativas and I bought some indicas and they all kind of had the, the same, like very similar. But then but then I found a few like the, the XJ13 and this green crack that hit real high up in here. And then I found some purple punch and uh, this blueberry muffin Xeno type thing that hit, hit real low. And yeah, man, sure as shit. And then when you vape, vape those at consistent temperatures you you do get more of the those highs do you remember what he said about how to sniff it he had a little he had a, he had a method for himself that worked where he would he would like kind of go and then he'd and then he'd come in and do a short and then i forget what but then he'd go three pulses and i think the last one was a he was like going at it like four or five different ways to smell it and i mean i, I can imagine if you don't know what's going on watching somebody do this like what the fuck's this kid up to I I thought he was making fun of wine people in that moment, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I, t I took notes. You were, you were hot. <laughs> in there somewhere. I don't know where they are. But I was like, I got to get this down. But really what I do is I don't have that method down, but I just, uh, I really just. I breathe. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I just keep going at it in different ways until I, I feel, feel it in the right place. I, I, I do it similar to how I'm, you know, inhaling or, or smelling coffee or something else that I would do a sniff test on. You know, that's, that's super cool, especially when, when getting material that does not have a label on it. Gold in those uh, illegal states, man, gold. I mean, you got, <clears throat> you have that knowledge. You can go into your guy's place and know what's up. You can pick stuff. You'll totally. I wish I knew about the sniff test when <laughs> California dispensaries were still cool, where you could go in and, and they had the big jars and you could actually like put your face in the jar and pick, pick nugs with chopsticks and, and weigh you, them out. You can't do that now? Uh, I think there are still dispensaries like that, but they're not all like that anymore. Like all, all the recreational stuff is is like pre-packaged and child-proof, and yeah, you don't get to sniff your nugs if you're buying. You don't even get to see the shit where I am. It just comes in a sealed package. See ya. <laughs> yeah. The old medicinal ways were were pretty fucking awesome. This is dope. So let me ask you this question. I've always tried to figure out how how can I remember these different breeds of of cannabis. Uh, both indica and sativa and somebody told me one thing that registered uh was when, when you when you think of indica think of in the couch. couch yeah right the and couch. then obviously sativa is just opposite of that so you're not going to be in the couch you know that's kind of a cool little term i heard back in the day hell yeah man hell yeah that, that's that's one thing that i've always i've always remembered i've always used that as well in the couch yep All right Sorry, Max. We're not using the leaf terms yet, man. I want to help the kid out, but nobody understands me when I talk his language yet. 
I know, man. And, and for a while I tried to, like, I, I tried to pin it. Like every time I would say a sativa, I would be like, oh, this is a, a narrow leaf marijuana. It's a sativa. Right. And then every time I would talk about indica, like, oh, this is a broad leaf marijuana. And, and then you got to deal with the haters in the comments, right? <laughs> yeah. Man. Are yeah. there haters that, that, that say some shit when you, every when you... time, dude, they're passionate really? about this shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. it should be all love, man. We're, we're all goddamn smoke some weed and have a good fucking day. Preach. You'd, Preach. You'd think it'd be like that. Why isn't it? Why? Come on, man. Come on, man. Can't we all just get along? Spread fucking love. Vape on with compassion. I'm I'm officially switching over to my purple punch with the G43. Actually, I had one little bowl of it earlier in the VAP cap, and it, it did slow me down. But I can still feel my my mm-hmm. mental snappiness. I want to go to a legal state real 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 bad, just so I can be right. just so I can go and get some branded labeled shit and just try it. Will I get the effects that they say is on the fucking label? I don't know because I've not tried it. I just want to try it and see how it goes yeah that first time is really fun man hopefully it's not depressing but at the end of the day i'll still be a happy camper regardless of what effects i get it 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 is cool just to buy legal weed just to walk into a store and and buy buy a weed so liberating the first probably probably more than the first six or ten times i was i was i was still giddy like the first time i bought an ounce i was giddy you know the first time i bought three ounces at a time i was like oh shit (laughs) <laughs> I don't think I don't think I've ever bought more than an ounce at a time. I used to buy two or three ounces, sometimes up to five ounces at a time. And I would buy from this dude who he, he lived in Humboldt. And whenever their grows would come down, he would load them up in his car and he would have a big, big bundle in his car. And he would list this shit on weed maps. Like I would find it on the internet and, and text him. And he would come up and he would, he would show up in my garage and he would, display all he, he would he would start pulling out these big ounce ounce pack he's like oh i got you know bubble gum kush i got this and i got this and i got this and i got these you know and, and so i could pull them out and smell them and one day i had, I had a table in, in my garage and he probably had 20 different ounces wow. also. and I, I was like popping them out and smelling them are you kidding me? i got a ups delivery <laughs> <laughs> the ups guy like walks in <laughs> that's great <laughs> he's, yeah. like, he's like oh i got a package i'm like oh cool and i was like signing for my package that's hilarious man it was just so it was so surreal it was so surreal that's so cool. uh you had a maid man that's awesome my boy dave has moved away he's, he's he's gone man so i'm now a dispensary boy i've been going to a couple of them around here and um it's it, it's it's been fun getting the sativas man i'm starting to get some things i like i uh I've been going to True Leave, and I like this um, this member berry they've got is a great hybrid. These guys here, Sunshine Cannabis, did a pod called Gainesville Green, which I'm partial to. I haven't been a Gator myself, and uh, man, that was a great sativa to walk around with. Man, that was one of the. I got to get another one of those. That was good. I think those are some of the kind of strains that I'm digging these days. That's cool. Member berry is member berry is is good. I I always like to have both. Like I always like to keep some sativas and some indicas, uh, and I and I do. Well, not right now. My tolerance is so high that I just vape at high temperatures and, and just go for more of a, a quick thing rather than temp stepping and, and going for efficiency. Right. Yeah. You're kind of getting right to it, aren't you? Yeah. Cutting yeah. to the chase, man. I know the, I know the, <laughs> I know the feeling. Which, I'm going to hit this G43. Yeah. these uh, All of my Indicas right now are extracts, actually. Uh, and same thing. I went to True Leave and got one of each. And uh, there was a Shatter and a Crumble and a, um, the, the Rosin. And there, I got them all Indicas. So my sativas are flower, and my my indicas are extract. Ooh. Nice big old hitty hit. Oh my god! Purple punch. <laughs> Look at you Purple go, punch man. in the G forty three. I'll tell it's you cool. one thing, man. I haven't figured out edibles yet on this stuff. I, I I took I made some some butter the other day with a with a pretty good hybrid. Man, I ate a big lump of it. Oof, man, I made like a butter sandwich. Man, I was knocked out, dude. Like two hours later, I was on the couch, like I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I passed out for a while, woke up still grogs. It was crazy. It was crazy grogs. So I don't know if 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 you can get the same effects with edibles or not, but um I haven't I haven't had any luck with it. Have you Troy? As far as getting sativa indica in edibles. I'm really glad you brought that up. And it's not on the not on our list of topics to talk about, but I was actually just thinking that while I was inhaling this. <laughs> uh, because I I've actually read some some shit. I think Strain Central is one of those guys who says like all edibles are just edibles. Like there is no sativa or indica edibles. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if I fully believe that. I understand that there's going to be some loss of those crucial terpenes, but I don't think it's, it's again, I, I think it's one of those things where there's a, there's some data that shows and then people go, oh yeah, blanket, apply this data to everything and data is, is contextual. So I, I think there are still indica versus sativa effects in edibles. I think in your that, experience? I wonder what you've experienced. Well, I, I've had very mixed results. And I and they haven't been promising, but there are, there are some this brand of gummies that I buy uh, where there are indica gummies and there are hybrid gummies and there are sativa gummies. I can eat a bunch of the sativa or the hybrid gummies and be fucking awesome. Like I can be high and I can be awesome all day. And I, when I was in Illinois, I think I went through five five hundred milligrams or so. The indica gummies from that same brand will put my shit to sleep. Wow. So not 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 crazy couch like just to sleep. Well, they they make me so comfortable uh-huh. that I just like I like I'm like ah uh, I was gonna I was gonna do this thing but the couch is so fucking comfortable I'm just gonna right. go to bed you know yeah but may, it could be placebo it could it could be in my head I don't know I don't know yeah I wonder about this that. is it this this is interesting I'm not <clears throat> I I didn't even think of that just because I can't I don't get edibles ever i mean i think it's actually god damn it i, I mean they're, they're chemically different you know what i mean uh so in terms of, of uh, but in terms of making your own edibles that's something that i should experiment with I've, I've been doing my own edibles with concentrates I'm just making my own edibles with with like a gram of shatter or a gram of, of oil sauce whatever and just quickly uh decarboxylating and, and, and making it and infusing it with butter but that's something that i can test i can i can get some sativa super strong sativa concentrates and do that will challenge you should you should you should test it and then we should talk about it in a faded episode or something and see and see what the results are because I'm, I'm curious to know if that is a if that's something that we can shed some light on um I've not really messed with too many edibles myself, to be honest with you. We can actually make a modern cannabis episode about it. Jerry, you're in a legal state and you can have edibles, right? Yeah, I can uh, I can buy some. Uh, not not as good a selection as you. I'm a lot of tinctures, but I can I can make anything. You know, I mean I can go buy a sativa and an indica and make it out of it or something. Wonderful. Well, I think we should do an edible episode where we take a bunch of edibles and and try to And try to get through an episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we need to, we need to, I need to, God damn it. I want to, I want to join this. <laughs> I want to <laughs> join this fun. Um, well, I guess, I guess we'll try to figure out something for that episode, but thank you guys for listening and, and uh, consuming this content wherever, wherever you are, whether you're YouTube, uh, any, any audio, uh, we, we appreciate you guys tuning in and, and staying up to date with, with these topics that we want to touch on. If you could do me a favor and go to Amazon and type in modern cannabis in the search bar. That way we can make it easier for everybody to find some of these new shirts that we have out. If you guys don't know, we have some new modern cannabis shirts Mm -hmm. Um, and every sale of these shirts go to uh, continuing to support the podcast. Um, It's all, it's all invested into what we're doing um, because this stuff isn't free. Shit ain't free. Yo, yo, (laughs) Cronobus crushed that artwork, man. he, He absolutely did. Um, Chronos did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Um, so with every purchase of the shirt, you guys help support this thing. Uh, so, so we appreciate all the investors who have already purchased some shirts. Uh, thank you guys. Also make sure you check out our new subreddit on, on Reddit, our modern cannabis. Um, there we're going to try and build a modern cannabis community where you guys are the modern cannabis. You guys are followers of the brand or the the movement of utilizing this material in the most modern, efficient way with with vaping and other uh, um, ways of delivery methods. But we want to we want to make this thing into a movement where we can share what it is that we all enjoy, which is the modern way to consume cannabis. Even if you smoke, we gotta get you. We gotta we gotta get you to try to try a vape. <clears throat> but you can still smoke it. You can still smoke it. That that's a good topic for us to talk about on that? one of our next episodes. Yeah, we'll do that. Man. Vape, vape purists versus vaping as uh, a, an accessory and smoking 
as well you know it's plant just lovers man plant lovers plant lovers. yeah man all plant lovers man all plant lovers are welcome anywho find us there subscribe share this with people that you think want to hear it we have some really cool episodes our most recent one um is obviously this one if you're listening but the one before this one is a cbd episode that i think i want to try and share that and spread that to as many people as possible because there's some really fucking phenomenal content in that cbd episode um because you don't have to get high to experience the medical benefits of of this plant so share that with some peeps let us know what you think about this shit we're about to get faded. That is another episode where we go live and we just get faded. We sesh with you guys. We talk with you guys and you, and we can answer any questions that you guys may have there. Yeah, you're going to want to see that, man, because I got a big old beast over here heated up. You ain't seen yet. That's what she said. <laughs>